Hi guys, Primrose here and welcome to the third part of my houseplant tour and today we will be doing the kitchen, a uh, stroke living room. So in the kitchen we have a single window facing east um, but what, we do not get uh, any direct sunlight here because we have a building right in front of it. Um, so this window cell here uh, is very crowded and um, please don't judge me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my trailing plants. So this is my neon pothos and it's a slow growing one compared to the green uh, variety and the leaves are like twisting um, it's reaching up towards the source of light I think and then um, another pothos so this is not counted but I still wanted to show it to you guys this was originally in the bedroom and I moved it here because it was uh, beginning to get sunburned so they are both in a macrame that I made that one is a white um, cotton material and that one is a jute fiber so in this section I have a bunch of orchids from last year I had a bad year with orchids so a cinnamon powder um, accident that um, dried out all of the roots. I tried to nurse them back but after six months and I saw nothing was happening I decided to uh, throw almost 25 orchids early this year and most of them were on cedium and uh, polynopsis the store-bought ones so they weren't that expensive. But this um, after the spring and summer, I'm so happy to see those roots that were not there before. And I'm glad I tried to um, hold on to some of them. So a cutlaya, and it's putting out a new uh, cane. And then a large phalaenopsis. And the roots of this one is like crazy. And another, uh, just a couple more phalaenopsis there and more phalaenopsis. And this one is actually budding. So this is my Pilea polybotria. And um, it's having the same issue of curling leaves as my uh, Pilea peperomioides. I know ev almost everyone um, is having the same issue with it plant. And uh, back there is my African Violet, another one, and they were constantly blooming for me in the springtime, um, a Dendrobium nobilis. So what I don't like this plant is that after it flowered, the cane is not as healthy looking, and I think it's normal, but look at the key keys that it's putting out. Another uh, phalaenopsis at the back, and it's got a ton of roots now. And a phalaenops, a dendrobium phalaenopsis that is uh, beginning to come back. My Pilea peperomioides. Uh, so this one, I really hope that it will make it because it's still hard to find in my area. And it's an expensive plant. Um, so I noticed that the leaves were not as glossy. So I checked down further, and the roots were so compact inside a like a grow sack. And that was supposed to be biodegradable, but it did not degrade at all. I tried to peel it off with my hand, but it was still strong that I had. To use a scissor and um, yeah so I hope that solved uh, the problem of the curling leaves but I'm hoping that it will come back for me because it's looking so sad and then another dendrobium 
uh, phalaenopsis and a tiny pot of uh, parsley that I have been using for my potato salad. So that is all I have in this area. And let's move on to, I have a propagation station here. So this summer, I made a big batch of this. I propagated a big batch of uh, regular pothos. And a friend of mine came over and I wasn't aware she was into houseplants. And when she saw it and she said, uh, can, I bring it, can I bring it home with me? And um, yeah, I was just so happy to pass on the green bug. So I made a tiny cuttings for myself and then um, some tiny spider plants from my uh, large mother plant and then a few cuttings from my philodendron scandens and here um, is another um, Drusina I have quite a few uh, several a variety of Dracaena in my collection and this one I like this one so much it's another um, easy care plant and um, in this section I have this uh, Fitonia and another Bothos that I have propagated in my snake plant and it's growing very tall. And then here is my ficus uh, benjamina. I really like this one. And I think it's now stopped um, shedding leaves. And down there is my um, philodendron I think it's a philodendron red baron I'm not so sure my calathea calathea some people call it and um in here is a another um fitonia another spider plant And um, I'll do this one first. So this is my hypostas, or a, uh, it's commonly known as a polka dot plant. And this is my uh, ZZ plant. So I had chlorosis issue with this plant last year. And those yellowing of leaves did not go away, but I'm glad that it stopped shedding leaves because as you can see, some of those are like empty down there. And um, the leaves that I have propagated, I uh, put them in there and hopefully they will grow tiny um, ZZ plant. And then and here is another uh, golden, I mean, everyone calls this Neon Pothos, but it came to me with that name. Um, e Golden Pothos. Another a spider plant and another African violet and this one this is the most difficult Drusina and I'm just trying to um, see if it will grow better in water I it's been in my care for more than a year but it's not doing anything it keeps putting out a uh, new leaf but then again it turned yellow so I'm not so sure. This is the only Dracaena that does not do well in my care. So I'm not so keen about that one. 
and um, my mother of thousands. So I have a lot of tiny babies of this plant. So if I'm going to post it on my uh, Facebook page, Macrame and Plants. If anyone wanted some plantlet, um, very easy care plant as well. And then here is my large Monstera Deliciosa. And it's um, putting out a new leaf back there. And um, this is my donkey's tail. So from on this side, it's looking a little bit um, not compact because this side does not get so much uh, direct sunlight. But I turn it, um, I I turn it once in a while, but sometimes I just forget. But it has grown so much and it's really long now. A lot I like those thick um, beans. And um, so this is another plant for, from Olga, another um, jade plant. Uh, I think I wanted to make this one to turn this into a bonsai because it's got that uh, thick um, stem already exposed and I really like it. And then this is my cactus. I think that one is uh, unidentified cactus, but it looks like a brain. This is the very first uh, cactus in my collection. So it's like four year old and it's not doing anything. No signs of uh, buds, but it's all right. It's looking beautiful. And um, Here is another uh, plant from Olga. This is the Kalankoi Fedchenkoi. I really like that uh, icy blue color of its leaves and it's like serrated. And it's got that yellow tone to it as well. And then here is my um, what do you call this? It's a Triciflora. And it's leggy um, by, but that's intentional. I cut off the bottom leaves because um, this area here below was not getting um, enough light. That's why some of them are leggy. So just a bunch of succulents that I threw in there. So it's not looking as nice. Um, so what do we have here? Um, I think there is an Andromiscus. Another Agavoides, a Chaviria Agavoides. And it's not getting too much uh, light, so I hope it will not stretch out. And here is another Cactus. And this one here, I had to tie it up. I had to stake it. It's been putting a lot of buds, but I turned this um, pot around to give them, uh, all of them, enough bright light. And um, I got bud lust. So I tried to um, leave it for now until the flowers uh, come comes out. But so far, it's not doing anything and I really like that plant it's a succulent and then some panda plant and um, a very stretched out very leggy moonstone and um, that one is stretching out so much now and 
and the beer paw. So I wanted to put it back like that so the uh, buds will not get disturbed. And then here is a tiny blunt jade, a uh, jade blunt. And it's uh, taking a little bit of time to recover. This one is from Olga as well, and I'm thinking of turning it into a bonsai tree as well. So I think, did I get everything? Yeah. So I think um, that's the end of this uh, third part. Guys, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Uh, take care. Have a nice day. Bye.